Okay, so I've got the uh, beginnings of my parapet done. I'll obviously come back and finish that later. But what I'm going to do now is start to set out the things I need for shadow diagrams and then maybe do the first shadow diagram. Now, just so I'm clear, you've been asked to do solar studies or some sort of sun diagram or shadow diagram, but have you been asked to do shadow diagrams that you would have with an application or just sun studies? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so she wants a site analysis. Good. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to show you some site analysis joints because you may not have come across these. Um, have you done site analysis before? Kind of, but it's a formal process. Now there are. Um, it's a, it's a required thing that you'll need for every uh, project these days, and something you should really do before anything else. So you can do a site analysis before you've got any idea about the design. It shouldn't matter at all. In fact, it's good not to think about the design um, before you do your site analysis. So I'm just trying to find one that's probably got the format that will be closest to what you'd want. Maybe something like this. That's a little bit too graphical or a bit too, you know, graphic designing. Uh, so this one is good. It's a bit messy, but it's got all the information. So the sun path diagram is good. Uh, in a graphical way like that, so showing sunrise and sunset in uh, summer and winter. Still keep a north point, which should always show true north. So your zenith, the, f the highest point of the sun, should be exactly the same as true north, which is not midday, by the way, it's slightly off. Um, then where are we? Uh, the vegetation views to and from and then shadows are good. So here we've got the shadows at, uh, I'd assume, uh, midday or the zenith um, on the either the 22nd of September or um, December or June, who knows, but one of those uh, solstice or equinox dates is, is typical. And again, midday is the typical angle you use for site analysis drawings. Midday. So you use midday sun oh. to show the angle of your shadows in, in uh, a site analysis drawing. For full shadow diagrams, you would show the angle or the shadows for 9am, midday, and then 3 o'clock is standard. And then sometimes you have to do other hours. Um, but another thing that's nice to have that I don't he have here to show you, unfortunately, but would be good for an interiors project is um, elevations showing the shadows. And the last thing I'll just show you there, if you are doing a full, it sounds like you need to do a full site analysis, not for me, but for Jeanette. Um, what do you include in a site analysis? Well, I did get a website that I've given to one of my other classes and unfortunately uh, need to go and get the shortcut from there. What I'll do instead is just show you how I found it. It wasn't very hard. So you can all guess, ask Mr. Google, um, site analysis. So oh, there we go, now it's the first link. So other people have worked it out. This uh, mob in the UK should be the first link if you just type in site analysis. And uh, first in architecture. Ah. Oh. I don't know why this is coming up differently to mine. Oh, uh, Twitter. Twitter. No, it should be the same. I've, I've done this search in other computers as well. So, uh, but yeah, it might have been the spelling. Yeah. Yep. So, first in architecture is the name of the website. It's English or, or British, but um, the process is the same everywhere. So, it's got almost a step by step set of points there can work through. And it's got some nice um, 
examples of things that you should be familiar with when you're working with site analysis. So I've talked to you about how you can get the temperature data already from the bomb site. So you can see it wasn't just a random thing, it's something that everyone does. And then the next thing, a full sun path diagram. Do you know which hemisphere that would be for? Which, which hemisphere is that for? Exactly, spot on, yep, that's good. So when you see it coming down below your centre point, that's Northern Hemisphere, up above is what you'll get with Southern Hemisphere. So this is for the Northern Hemisphere, and we can tell because all of these points are below the centre. So the curve comes below the centre here and they're all towards south. In the Southern Hemisphere, most of this would be towards the, on the north side or the top. No, you just need to understand it. So you need to know what you're looking at there. It's showing you the sun path throughout the year. So this is summer here, the inside arc. The outside arc, the bottom arc there is winter. Southern hemisphere, um, it would be up the top. Yeah, I'll let you have a look at that, but hopefully that'll help you. And so back into Revit quickly then, we can start to set out the 3D geometry we need to get it to cast the shadows. So I'm going to go to my site satellite DWG view, which I set up to have the satellite image showing. And before I model the, um, the buildings, I need to put a ground plane in. Now, this ground would definitely be sloping, and we will probably put the slope in later but we don't really know what it is at the moment. So I'm going to make a flat site by going to the site, massing in site tab, and then topo surface. So have you made topo surfaces before? No? Okay, so if this is um, something you haven't done, topo surfaces are what you usually use to make ground surfaces. And you can see from the example there that it's uh, got all these contours. We're not going to have the contours, it'll just be flat. So all you need to do is just click the topo surface button on massing and site. And then I'm going to make the elevation here, you can see on the options bar, it should be zero. I'm going to make it minus 100. Just so that it's 100 mil below our main floor level. Yep, just type in minus 100 and then enter. And then click four points outside that satellite image. So one, two, three, four. So I'm covering it completely. So that's it. That's the ground surface done. Once you've done the four points, tick to finish. And you'll have a ground. But now I can't see the satellite image anymore. So I'm going to go to the um, uh, visual styles or the, um, the cube down on the view control bar and change to wireframe. And it'll be see through again. So we can see the satellite image. And then to model these building shapes. What do you think would be the easiest way to model these mass forms that we have? And it's not massing, sorry? Pretty much, that's it, spot on. Extra, yeah, that's exactly right. So, component and use model in place. So, back to architecture, you can go to the menu or the arrow under component, go to model in place. Just use generic models for your category. Click OK. And you can call it whatever you like, really. You're the only one who'll know. But maybe a good name might be Neighbouring Buildings. Just so that you know when you see the name of this thing later on, what it is. I'm not going to be checking, but uh, again, just give it a meaningful name. So we click OK. And then we've got the modeling tools. So I'm not going to model 
all the different roof shapes. I'm going to make extrusions for everything just to do a block form for each of these buildings. So clicking on the extrusion tool and then I'm going to zoom in and trace the outline of these buildings in plan. So try to identify each of the separate properties. And I'll really, ev even within each property, each of the different uh, bulk building forms. So you can see here that this um, block element here is probably part of the development that has these uh, curved roof forms that I'd say is um, a set of apartments. Right, so even though it's all probably one property, I'll use two different extrusions for that. So, or maybe even three. And the th no, I'll keep it simple and just use two. So I'm going to use one for this part that is probably the staircase. Who knows, it may even be a different building. Okay, so I've got one extrusion there. Or oh, sorry, one rectangle I've drawn for that extrusion. We don't know the heights. We can probably look in Street View to get an idea. So we're looking at this building here. Let's zoom in there. Oh, okay, so it looks like maybe it is a separate building. Lucky I did a separate rectangle. So, yeah, okay, so it is actually a separate building. So there we can see that's only two storeys. Right, so you can assume three to four metres a storey. Here I'd say that's probably closer to four metres. So let's say eight metres would be the rough height of that building. And so I can either go to the depth here or extrusion end. Do basically the same thing. I'm going to make oh, I'm going to do it with extrusion end. I'm going to make that eight thousand. So in properties you've got extrusion end. And the reason I'm doing it there is because I also want to change the extrusion start. It's only a little thing, but it will affect the way your shadows look. I'm going to make that minus a hundred to make sure the extrusion starts on my ground, not at my floor height. So we don't have a gap at the bottom of the shadow. That's it, tick to finish. And I've got my first neighbouring building. Wouldn't hurt to even go to a 3D view there just to see basically what it looks like. We've got a very basic block form there, but it will of course cast shadows. So now without going to finish model, I'm going to go and keep adding more and more extrusions. So for each building, at least I'll need one extrusion. Is that extrusion only now your uh, 8,000. So I'm going to just draw a rectangle for this building as well, which we know has a much more interesting shape, but we don't need to see that. So I'm going to make the whole thing just with one big rectangle. Going to look in oh, street view. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, near extrusion, exactly, yep. Yeah. Okay, so it is. Probably, yeah, I'll, yeah, you're right, it's to the parapet, but then it's got another story above, so I'm going to even go higher than that and make it maybe 15,000. Yep. It is, I enjoy this too. I really like it because I, I probably should have been a town planner. I love that level of design. Yeah. Yep. It does. I know. I really like doing it. Yep. I've done a model of the whole Sydney, of the whole of Sydney CBD. Yeah, the whole thing with just boxes. And, but it gives you a really good idea of the, the layout and the density of the city. And um, there, there are a couple you can download, but they're not very good. And, um, and no one wants to give it out. I mean, I wouldn't give anyone mine um, unless they paid me a lot. <laughs> I know, you'd think the council would do it. And it's just another thing where Australia maybe is a bit behind other places because New Zealand do exactly that. Um, with, and look, I, I could be wrong because I've never worked there, but I've worked with quite a few Kiwis. Um, and uh, so they, they were telling me that the process there when you're working on a design is to go to council as your starting point. They give you all the information that the previous person doing a design had done. They even give you the digital files, so they give you all the CAD files, everything, which is it makes perfect sense. 
and, um, and they've got a model where it's all combined as well. And, uh, and so then you're just adding to the work that's been previously done. Unlike here, it is, it's totally logical. But here, everyone starts from scratch every time. Yeah. That's the way it should have been from the beginning, and it makes perfect sense. But councils here are run by crazy people. I shouldn't say that, but it's true if you have dealt with them. Um, logic doesn't come into it for them, and they think other things are more important. So, uh, yeah, they, they were better 30 years ago, but it's just getting worse now. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, but it won't be long. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you then one more building, because I'll, I'll just make sure I show you one that isn't a rectangle. So I'm going to go back to create, make a new extrusion, and this will be a dog leg type shape, just for something different. Now, if you're wondering about the roads and other things later on, you can come back and add those in. Don't worry about those. This is just bulk forms, mainly for the shadows. So we've got our rough outline here with a courtyard or something inside. And so this building, being another two-storey, I'm assuming, will make uh, 8,000 again. Uh, sorry, 8,000 here. Okay, so I've got enough maybe to look at the shadows down on the south, but I maybe will put in just one or two buildings uh, up here on the north side that I know will give me shadows. Um, so I just drew lines rather than rectangle. So I just draw it with the line tool up here yeah. and then you can trace. Sorry? Yeah, I finished it. So I made it uh, uh, 8,000 here. So this building, I have no idea what height would be. I'm just going to guess and say uh, 20,000 because there are some tall buildings down there I know. You might think that's tall for a um, for a skinny building like this, but I mean, have a look in Tokyo. They've got buildings that are three meters wide but are 20, 30 stories high. So you can do it. Um, and this area would be one of the few in Sydney where you would have buildings that are similar to that. So it could be one of these. Yeah, I'm just going to assume it is. So don't copy all my heights because I'm just guessing and they're. Some of them are probably not right. But I'm going to finish my model now and then go through the setup for shadows. So you can set the shadows up before you model all the buildings, of course. So I'll show you the 3D view, though, very quickly. So I do have a few buildings and I'll turn the shadows on there. And you can see, obviously, all of the buildings and the things I've modelled are casting shadows. But if I orbit, what happens? It becomes pretty clear that these shadows are not coming from the sun because they're changing angle. <laughs> so what that means is they're view dependent. And you might think, well, why is it like that? Totally logical because often you don't need the shadows to be at the angle of the sun. They're just a graphical thing in some cases. And so here they're view dependent. They're always going to be 45 degrees. So you look at this angle, relate it to maybe the bottom edge of this, and notice how it's always the same. No, that's a different thing. That's the sun path. We'll look at that next. Yep. Oh, I'll show you in a second. So, okay, so we need to get the shadows, and it works the same if I go to the site drawing here that I've just double clicked, and you probably will need to do this. So, start with site. I just showed you the 3D so it was a bit clearer, but in site as well, if I turn shadows on now, we can see them, but they're not based on the sun. So I'm going to click on the sun icon and then go to sun settings. Then you've got the still option in the top left corner there. Still uses the sun loca or the position of your uh, project on the planet, in other words, on, on, the, on the Earth. Uh, to work out the um, the sun angles or the sun 
shadow angles. Right, so of course the angles change as you move across the planet and you need to get that location set. Uh, yes, but we'll worry about that in a sec. So the first thing is to get a setting that you can duplicate. Notice how it'll probably start with this in session still. So I'm going to go to, um, we'll start with summer solstice. So I'm going to start with summer solstice. And then notice how down below you can use the duplicate option once you choose that. Okay, so with in session, you can't duplicate, but if you choose one of these below, you can copy any of these settings. So let's just do that. If you click on the copy button, then you can give it your own name. Do you know what summer solstice means? Yeah. So that's the shortest day of the year, so the longest day of the year, which means the shortest shadows. Okay, so we can say summer solstice, but we can put a time in as well. Right, so summer solstice 1200, midday. Now, it's probably set to that already, but if it isn't, you can always change the time and make sure it's 12 p.m. And then for the location, it'll probably be Canberra because it uses your computer's location to, um, to pick, that, pick up the setting here. But I think we've got a network that's in Canberra and so we're on a massive domain and uh, it's throughout all of New South Wales and it's obviously not picking up the uh, server location from the server in Sydney. So it's going to Canberra. Um, on your computers it'll probably find that you're in Sydney but you can always browse. Is the setting that much different? It is. It's enough to worry about, yeah. It's a couple of degrees off. We're about 35 or 34 degrees and they're 30... I oh know, so they're um, the other way. They're 37 or something like that. So... It's enough to yeah make a difference. Yeah. So yeah, oh that's right in Europe exactly yeah exactly yeah. So um, so you can't search again because of the way the internet set uh, is working here, but you can always change the location defined by location to default city list, and then if you click on the list of cities below that, you'll easily find Sydney in the list there. Yeah, exactly, not the one in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you can try typing that and it'll try to find it. Yeah, it sometimes does work, but it's just not guaranteed because of the way the internet connects here. Yep. So, okay, so you've got to be on default city list if you want to see the list. If you've got the map, then you won't see the list. Okay, but that's it. So then, um, there we are, latitude 33. So I think Canberra's about 36. But uh, now I need to know. So let's see. Canberra is, yeah, 35 point something. Okay, so also you'll see there's an option for the ground plane. Remember, we've drawn the ground, so turn that off. And then click OK. And if you get a message about the updater, you can just disable it. Disable updater. Right, so notice how drastic the change in shadows is. We haven't set true north yet, that's the next thing. So luckily we're pretty close to um, the angle of the building, but we'll, we'll do north next. So that's got the sun setting for um, the date and time that we've set. But like you're saying, we've got to set true north. So how do we know which way true north is? Yeah, exactly, from the satellite. So you need to go back to your site satellite view where you can see the satellite image. And I've got to show you a trick here to get this to give you um, true north. The easiest way, I think, or the way it's going to work the most easily is if you duplicate that view. So right-click on the view, duplicate view, 
then duplicate with detailing. And then, may as well give it a new name. So I'm going to rename this and call it Site Satellite True North. Yep, True, True North. Or just TN, just so it's a different name to the other one. So now, if you go into your view properties, you'll see there's an option for orientation and you need to change it from Project North to True North. So it should be in the top part. Yep. So just below the two edit buttons, next thing. Yep. So it needs to say... Sorry? We're going we're gonna to set True North now. So that's just the setting you need in your view properties. Oh, okay. And then you need to go to the Manage tab. And in Projects, uh, the Project Location panel, you'll see the bottom um, drop-down panel there will let you choose this option, Rotate True North. So it's on the Manage tab. And then it's, uh, yep, there. So you've got the button um, with the next to the spanner, so to the right of where you are, yep. yep. Okay, so once you choose Rotate True North, you'll get this gizmo. Notice how there's a line coming out from a blue dot in the middle. And you need to drag that blue dot up onto the corner of your satellite image and has to snap exactly, so you might have to do it in a couple of steps. So here, well it's actually not snapping, but I can just do it visually, right onto the, um, the corner there. So I'm zooming right in just to make sure it's as close as I can get to that corner point. Nothing else I can use is there. Okay, so I'll have to use that. And so then I'm going to get the edge. You can see I'm just zooming there so that I can show it to you. Um, it's going to try and snap to horizontal. So there you can see I'm trying to bring it up, but before I get it onto the edge of the image, it's snapping back to horizontal. So you can use tab. Just press tab once. And it's still being a bit painful. So... Yeah, so yeah, it should work normally. It's just uh, being a bit difficult. Yeah, no, mine, mine's um, difficult as well. So, look, without going into any other tricks, I'm going to show you an extra step. Before you go and choose Rotate True North, just go and draw a reference plane right along the edge of your image. And again, you might need to use tab to stop it snapping back to zero, but it should be a bit easier than doing the um, rotate true north straight away. Yep, so draw the reference plane, then go back and do rotate true north, and it will snap with no problem right onto the end of that reference plane, snap onto the reference plane with your second click, and then you can bring the line around to vertical. And so it won't say 90, it'll say something like 87.6 or something like that. And it should change, the view should change. The whole thing should flip around and look like this. Yeah, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make it 90, but the number won't say 90. Oh, afterwards it will, yeah. When you select it, it should, that's right. So now mine says 90 because... Yeah, that's right. That's it. Yep, that's right. Yep. Okay, so mine is 90 now that I've done it. So that's what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to get that edge to be perfectly vertical. Yep. 
That's right. You're making the satellite image go back to the angle it was in Google Maps or Six Maps. Yeah. Ah, I'll show you. Okay, I'll come and check them in a second. But that's all you need to do to set True North. If you've got that right, when you go back to the site view that has your satellite, notice how it isn't rotated. Right? It hasn't changed. The angle is the same. But the shadows have changed. The shadows are now using True North. Yeah. So it might seem like a lot of steps and uh, the first few guys you might need to just no, remember the steps. That's right. That's exactly what you need. That's done. That's yeah, exactly it. 12 o'clock. Now, the only, the only thing you might want to change is the date. So, remember I was saying you usually use midday for a site analysis drawing, but it may not be the summer solstice. You could try the winter solstice. So, winter solstice, again, turn the ground plane off, it will give you much longer shadows. That might be too long. So, instead of either the summer solstice or the winter solstice, the other options are either spring or autumn equinox. Do you think it makes a difference which one you choose, spring or autumn? Yeah. Exactly. They are identical. Yeah. Right, so, either equinox or the sum, summer or winter are okay if you want long or short shadows. But generally you might want, for a building lot that's this tall, equinox might be good because it's a tall building. You don't want the shadows to be too long. So there we are. If you're interested in techniques you can use to overlay shadows in um, Photoshop, I'm just going to show you a video. We won't have time to do this in class and it's not really part of this subject, but luckily for you, I've just shown one of my other classes who, who do need to do this uh, exactly how to do this, what I'm talking about. So. I'll just show you the playlist. Okay, so if you go to my YouTube channel and then go to the playlists, it is the Ultimo Midrise building. And you'll see that the two playlists I've done, sorry, the two videos I've done at the end of that playlist there, set out site analysis and develop site analysis. So I'll show you how to do site analysis drawings using Revit and Photoshop. And so here you'll see I've basically taken, skip past this, so I've taken lots of different views from AutoCAD. I've done a bit more here that I haven't shown you, but if you want to look at that, you're welcome to, of course, look at how I've done the um, road material and the ground material. And it's still loading. Shouldn't be this slow. Uh, once you get used to a good internet connection, you can never go back. Uh, so slow. Here we are. So there's the sun path. If you're interested in getting that sun path, sorry, not the sun path, the um, the sun um, diagram. Yeah, it's a good thing to have. Zoe was saying the, the uh, website she's been using, what was the one you've been using? To um, sun yeah, suncouch.org will give you something similar. But, yep. but you can get it with Revit as well. So the icon that you see when you turn on the sun path down here, sun path on, does something similar, but that's only showing one date. If you want to get the other dates, you have to go and adjust your sun settings. And then normally what you've got to do is trace over that <laughs> to get that <laughs> that sun path. Yeah, Something like that, yeah. It doesn't need more complicated. No. Like yep, that's right. Why am I sure that this is different than that? Uh, you're, so, you're north. I'll, I'll come and have a look at it in a second. Um, but then, apart from all of the different um, sun angles and things like that, you also want to make sure it's got a graphical style. So here you can see I'm working in Photoshop with line work that I've taken from Revit. And then I'll combine that with a layer with the shadows that I've also taken from Revit. There it is. 
Okay, so these shadows can then be um, separately adjusted and then you can add in things like the sun path diagram and your wind and your views just in a graphical way in Photoshop. That's often the easiest way. Yeah, it's a graphical drawing. Most people wouldn't even use a computer. Most people would do this by hand. And, uh, you know, that's just when you're doing assignments. I know you want to make things super neat and uh, you might use software instead. Okay, so, um, anyhow, if the um, shadows take you a little while to set up, don't worry because it takes most people a bit of time. But uh, just try and get them working at least for midday on one of those dates. And uh, also one last thing I will say is don't be afraid to duplicate views as well. So if you think you need to duplicate your site view and um, have one set up just for your shadows, so I'll call this site shadows. Don't be afraid to do that because the view settings are always unique to each view. In other words, you can change the shadow settings here and they won't affect the original site view. But if you're going to try that, just remember the sun settings also need to be duplicated. So if I want to change this, say, uh, autumn equinox sun setting, I need to duplicate it. Give it a new name. If I wanted to change and then have the original not changing. It's just one of those little things. So, uh, otherwise, I'll let you maybe work on that during the week if you can. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, oh no, sorry, there was one other thing I meant to mention. Elevations work exactly the same way. So, if you want to see the sun on your building in elevation, you can do that. If I turn the shadows on there, how good is that? It's a great thing just as a graphical display to get that extra depth in your elevations. Beautiful thing actually, when you look at a lot of the hand drawn elevations from the old days, that's exactly what we used to do. And uh, again, you can use the sun settings from your locality back to still, and I could set it to summer solstice. But that might mean the whole building's in shadow, which may not be a very useful thing to show people, so it might be more sensible there to use the lighting option which sets again a view based shadow angle which is really more of a graphical shadow than anything else but it can be good to, again to know that when you're looking at elevations okay, so hopefully that might help you as well